Hello friends, today we are going to learn non-ferrous metals and alloys. A part of it is brass. We are going to study today brass as a copper alloy. In introduction, we know that metallic materials, they are generally of two types, ferrous materials and non-ferrous materials. Ferrous materials includes the metals and alloys which contain ferrous means iron as their main constituent whereas non-ferrous materials and alloys does not contain ferrous as main constituent or ferrous is existing means iron is existing in non-ferrous materials in very small amounts non-ferrous metals are those which contain a metal other than iron as their main element or constituent. Non-ferrous metals find wide applications in various industrial sectors because of the following advantages. First one is low density, hence they are light in weight. Second one is high electrical conductivity as compared to ferrous metals and alloys. Third one is easy to fabricate. Fourth one is high corrosion resistance as compared to ferrous metals and alloys. So ferrous and non-ferrous metals can be distinguished on the basis of different points. First one is ferrous metal mostly contain iron as main constituent whereas non-ferrous metals do not contain iron as main constituent. Ferrous metals are generally magnetic whereas non-ferrous metals are non-magnetic. Ferrous metals and alloys give little resistance to corrosion whereas non-ferrous metals are usually more resistant to corrosion than the ferrous metals. Ferrous metals include mild steel, carbon steel, wrought iron, cast iron etc. whereas non-ferrous metals include copper, aluminium, nickel, tin, lead, zinc, etc. Ferrous metals are heavier. They have high strength and durability. Whereas non-ferrous metals are much higher and malleable than ferrous metals. They are, see, ferrous metals are suitable for building construction, rail, road application, bridges, piping application etc whereas non-ferrous metals are suitable for electrical wirings electronic components heat exchanger applications etc let us start with copper and its alloy so basically we are going to study brass here so first of all we need to know about copper first so the properties of copper are Good ductility and malleability, high electrical and thermal conductivity, non-magnetic property. Copper can be easily alloyed with other metals. Copper is having good corrosion resistance. Various alloying elements can be added to copper to improve or add some properties of copper. The major alloying elements are zinc, tin, aluminium, phosphorus, lead beryllium, ferrous that is iron, silicon, nickel, magnesium and manganese. The alloys of copper are classified as brass and bronze. Brasses are alloys of copper and zinc with small amount of other alloying elements. Bronzes are the alloys of copper and tin with small amount of alloying elements. See, this is what is the figure which shows the types of copper alloys, basically brasses and bronzes. The figure itself is self-explanatory. Please go through the figure. Brasses. Brasses are alloy of copper and zinc with small amount of other alloying elements. 
the phases in copper zinc alloy system are as shown in the figure alpha that is highly ductile phase beta this phase increases the tensile strength gamma it is hard and brittle phase brasses are generally classified as alpha brasses the alpha brasses generally contain zinc less than 30% and alpha beta brasses which contain the zinc in between 30 to 44% alpha brasses let us see alpha brasses uh, these are also called as red brasses red brasses the brasses containing zinc less than 20% are referred as red brasses due to its red color the types of red brasses see here first one is cap copper composition is zinc 2 to 5 percent balance is copper the properties the zinc is used as a deoxidizer to avoid formation of copper oxide copper oxide itself is a hard and brittle layer cap copper is highly ductile so application of cap copper copper is caps of detonators in ammunition factories coins tokens second one is gilding material composition zinc is 5 to 15 percent balance is copper the properties are addition of zinc improves the strength it has good ductility and pressing ability improved corrosion resistance then applications of gilding metals are coins needles emblems jewelry bullet envelopers condenser tubes yellow brasses yellow brasses contains zinc greater than 20% they are referred as yellow brasses because of their yellowish color first one is cartridge brass it is also called as 70 30 brass composition is 30 percent zinc balance is copper properties are high resistance to corrosion high ductility and malleability it is a dual phase alloy after cold working and subsequent annealing its microstructure is observed to be equiax grains Basic applications of cartridge brass are cartridge cases, radiator fins, headlight reflector, lamp fixtures, rivets, springs, plumbing accessories, etc. Second point is Admiralty brass. 71281 brass. Composition is zinc is 28%, tin is added as 1%, and balance is copper. It has a property similar to that of cartridge brass. The addition of tin improves the corrosion resistance. Its applications include marine environments where the ex excessive desincubation occurs, that is, zinc corrodes preferentially, leaving the behind the copper in porous form. So, to overcome this problem, sometimes aluminum and small amount of antimony is added to admiralty brass so applications are condenser tubes heat exchanger in power plants alpha beta brasses now these brasses contain zinc in the range of 30 to 40 percent beta phase has more strength they are generally hot work for fabrication work these are cheaper than alpha brasses as zinc is cheaper than copper but alpha beta brasses have poor corrosion resistance as compared to alpha brasses so first of all we will we will see one of first type of alpha beta brass that is moon's metal it is 60 40 brass so 40 percent zinc remaining is our balance is copper so what are the properties it becomes single phase above 700 degrees celsius they are hard and strong as compared to alpha brasses at a high temperature beta phase has more ductility and malleability hence it is usually hot work rolled or iron extruded so it has good mechanical properties basic application include pump parts such as walls condenser tubes shafts nuts bolts utensils bracing rods etc
सेकेंड इज नावल ब्रास नेवल ब्रास मीन्स सिक्सटी थर्टी नाइन वन ब्रास सो जिंक इज थर्टी नाइन पर्सेंट टीन इज एडेड एज वन पर्सेंट एंड बॉलेंस इज कॉपर इट इज वेरी सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ मून मेटल ओनली वन थिंग इज डन दैट इज टीन दैट इज एस एन इज एडेड टू द मून मेटल अप टू वन परसेंट इट इम्प्रूव द कॉरोजन रेजिस्टेंस एंड it is used generally used in marine environment hence it is called as naval brass also basic application of naval brass are marine hardware propeller piston rods building rods nuts and bolts water taps etc third one is leaded brass or free cutting brasses that is 60 38 to brass so zinc is 38% lead is added up to 2% and balance is copper addition of lead improves the machinability of this brass it is generally called as free cutting brass basic applications are machine parts and hardware parts next type is high tensile brass so it is typically a 60 40 brass that is moons metal with alloying elements added to it the alloying elements that are added include aluminum ferrous that is iron manganese tin and nickel so properties are improved tensile strength then these are further classified as aluminum brass manganese brass tin brass etc the basic feature of this type of brass is it has high corrosion resistance and application include marine pump parts propeller shafts gear and wall bodies so season cracking of brasses so this is one phenomenon which generally occur with brasses both alpha and alpha beta brasses are susceptible to this phenomenon known as season cracking it is a defect wherein spontaneous cracks are observed in the metal during cold working of brasses internal or residual stresses of tensile nature are induced in the component these stresses can be due to the pressing drawing or some other cold working operation the localized stresses area become anodic with respect to other area of the component it leads to intergranular corrosion resulting in subsequent disintegration and failure of the component such a defect phenomenon is called as season cracking season cracking can be avoided by annealing the component to remove the internal stresses annealing of brasses is performed at a temperature in between 280 degrees celsius and 300 degrees celsius let us see one example this is what is the example of season cracking season cracking in brass cap and cartridge case is shown here please see so this is what today we have studied about the brasses brass and alloy of copper thank you thank you very much